This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and undeniably, this has to be one of the prettiest laptops on the market. This is the ASUS ZenBook S14 for 2024, UX5406 is the model number, and this has the latest Intel CPU, that second generation or 200 generation of the Core Ultra CPU, specifically Core Ultra 7. We're going to look at it now. So this is a premium ultrabook. It can compete with the Dell XPS 13, though obviously they sell those into the business market too and others. And like I said, it's probably the best looking one. It, that ser aluminum lid ceramic aluminum, in other words, a ceramicized coating on it, is just really neat. It's matte to the touch, sort of like a, a non-glazed ceramic, yet the sturdiness of aluminum. So that's nice. It's thin, obviously, 13 millimeters, crazy thin and light, 2.65 pounds, which is 1.16 kilograms. So, okay, premium looking chassis, all metal build, all that kind of stuff. Zen books have been looking awful nice for a while, no kidding. But inside we have a 3K, and some people might call it 2.8K, OLED display, and it's a touch screen, which means it's glossy also. And it's a lovely one. Of course, the panel is made by Samsung, like pretty much all OLED displays on the market. 2880 by 1800 resolution, Really pretty good calibration out of the factory on inky deep blacks. Not the brightest at 361 nits. We measured in SDR brightness. You'll get peak local brightness that's higher in, in HDR mode, but um, unless you need to use it in bright outdoor locations where the glossiness and the not high nits that are pretty typical of a lot of OLED laptops. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to love this thing. And good speakers, too. We have quad stereo speakers. Each of them is one watt, four watts total power, which means you're not going to listen to your friend's MacBook and go, oh, wow, mine doesn't sound so good. It does sound very good. So that's nice. Keyboard, 1.1 millimeters of travel, white backlit. Uh, in other words, very thin laptop, very short key travel. It's shallow key travel. It's tactile enough, but you know, it's short travel. Huge trackpad and the edges have controls for brightness and volume if you want to, because ASUS loves to do things with their trackpads. No embedded number pad in the trackpad here anyway, though. Wi-Fi 7, Intel based. So all this is sounding good. Windows Hello, IR camera, all Bluetooth, of course, all the stuff that you want. So the other thing that's going on here is Intel's new CPU. We have the Core Ultra 7, and this is the 200 series, so second generation of Core Ultra, with an even more monolithic design. So even the RAM is in the system on chip at this point, not like what Apple's been doing, right? And we're seeing Ryzen incorporate RAM too. But Intel is going for longer battery life and cooler temperatures, two things that Intel is not particularly known for, especially with Snapdragon and Elite hitting the market and having really long battery life and still pretty good performance and stuff. There's obviously interest in this. Of course, Snapdragon is ARM based. So for those of you who have found some applications that you need that don't run under Windows emulation to run Windows x86 apps on ARM, for example, and you still need your x86 architecture, it means AMD Ryzen or Intel for you. Well, they do keep the power limits low. So it used to be with Intel CPUs, even these ultrabook kind of CPUs, like they'd be nominally 28 watts or something like that. But then you would see them boost to 50, 65 watts or something like that to get very good performance numbers. So they're controlling that now. You have a nominal 28 watt CPU and it's not going to be boosting to forever high watts. So yes, battery life is better, probably about two hours compared to last generation Intel Core Ultra that we reviewed. That's that's nothing to sneeze at. And with an OLED display here, particularly, you know, usually that, especially a high resolution one, is going to really tank your battery life. And so we were getting 10 to 12 hours at 200 nits of brightness in mixed productivity, light use, not playing games or Adobe Premiere or something like that the whole time, but kind of normal everyday things, which is what these kind of laptops are designed for, right? But the performance isn't that good either. So there you go. That, that's the hurt here. Now, it's not abysmal. It's not bargain basement terrible or something. And to be honest, when people are buying these thin, light ultra books for everyday use, you know, we all chase fees and speeds and horsepower and all that sort of thing. And we worry about future proofing and stuff like that. And most of them are more powerful than you'll ever need. Like when I complain that this is slow and I look at Geekbench scores where multi-core, which is where the hurt is really. Um, and I see 10,000s and it should really be in the 11,000s. I, I just couldn't get our unit to reach that. You know, that's faster than a three-year-old gaming laptop with a more heavy duty CPU. So it's not bad. 
in the big picture of things, but with the competition from 2024, the Qualcomm Snapdragon Elite is actually faster, where that one scores 15,000 multi-core instead of 10 to 11,000 like this one does. And Ryzen is right up there with Qualcomm too in the performance numbers. Now Ryzen does use more power than the Intel. So that's the herd. So that's, uh, it made it hard to do this video. It's the most gorgeous laptop in the world. The CPU is performant enough, but we don't really ever usually see this new generation of CPU performing more slowly on benchmarks than the previous generation, which is what's happening here. Does it feel slow in everyday use? No. Can it play games? I mean, this is not a gaming laptop. If you're looking at playing older games or more casual games, that sort of thing. Yeah, it actually can because here's the thing. Intel Arc Graphics is pretty good for integrated graphics. This is the Arc 140V integrated GPU, and it's faster than the previous generation, which was no slouch, and it's holding its own against Ryzen and their graphics, which are always pretty good for their integrated graphics. So that part's good. So it does better than average when it comes to gaming, go figure in certain cases, when it comes to the graphics portion of those things. So that's nice. Is this going to feel horrible when you're using Photoshop in your average, I'm editing my photos from my phone or my hobbyist SLR camera? No, it's not going to feel slow. But for those of you who are actually looking at the Cinebench scores, which are almost, you know, those are heavy duty benchmarks for really more performant laptops, so we still use them. If you're the kind of person who is thinking about doing Premiere Pro on this and you don't want to get a more appropriate, bigger laptop, well then no, you're not best served by this one. Even the last generation Intel would probably be better or something from Ryzen. A Snapdragon though, no, because they really fall down in the GPU section. That's the one place that they aren't strong. What about this laptop in particular? Because you still need a laptop in 2024. This thing is bloody gorgeous. It has a fantastic screen, all that stuff. Well, uh, the one we're looking at is 1500 bucks. You get 32 gigs of RAM. Again, that's integrated in with the CPU package, so you can't upgrade that after the fact. There is a 16 gig model out there, I believe, for $100 less, so just get the 32. And you get one terabyte of storage, which is the only upgradable thing. That still has an M2280 slot so you can upgrade the SSD or swap it out if you want. The battery is serviceable of course you can remove that but everything else is side on your, your RAM, your Wi-Fi, all that sort of thing. There's really nothing much to see if you take a look inside of here as a result. So there you have it. That's the Asus Zenbook S14 for 2024 with Intel inside and stunning laptop Enough performance for most of us, but not going to be last year's model and anything other than the graphic scores. Okay, so I rained on this CPU's prey, but again, if you're looking for Snapdragon elite level battery life, but that is not the processor for you. You don't want ARM-based Windows laptop at this point, and there are people who do need applications or drivers that still aren't compatible. I mean, you do get that battery life here. So if longevity is what matters to you, you're taking this laptop on the road or to school, and you do not want to have to plug it in, then it's perfect for those kind of tasks. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.